So my first and last name is Joshua Yu, specialist in the U.S. Army, Texas National Guard. So I'm a 35 Fox all-source intelligence analyst. And what I do is I basically analyze what the enemy is going to do, make assessments based on what we do know, based on their order of battle, which is their disposition and composition, and try to correctly assess the different situations that we might end up facing as a unit. Currently, I'm attached to the S2 DSB, the D Division Support Sustainment excuse me, Brigade, and we've, we're mainly focused on the rear and m ensuring that the logistical element of the division doesn't get destroyed or targeted by enemies in our rear area. We are mainly focused in the S2 of DSB on enemy special purpose forces, enemy recon, as well as enemy commando units who are in the rear of our frontline forces who are there to disrupt, destroy, and raid our supply lines. So I'm actually part of the Texas Army National Guard, 1st Armored Division's main command post operational, operational detachment. That's a detachment, a company detachment that's assigned to the higher headquarters battalion. So this CPX, from what I've seen so far, has helped us identify some of the weaknesses we have in our planning and setup for the warfighter, such as communications systems, uh, even little things such as making sure we have all of our enemy icons set up or our board set up correctly to track, battle track enemy damage and also enemy positions. It definitely helps prepare us due to the fact that myself, I haven't been doing this full time, so it gets me back into the groove of being a 35 Fox Intel analyst. It refreshes my memory a lot on the, the TTPs tasks that we have to do. It also helps me remember a lot of the nomenclature of the enemy forces. There are a lot of different enemy units and a lot of different enemy equipment. So it also it helps us prepare by refreshing us and also helps us get our reps in in order to be successful for Warfighter. I uh, definitely appreciate this training. Not a lot of soldiers in the Texas Army National Guard can get this type of training. Uh, the 1st Armored Division allows us to train alongside with them in many CPXs and this warfighter, and it helps a lot to keep the, the, the memory of my job fresh. Uh, Staff Sergeant Troy Barajas. Uh, right now we're just planning for the overall operation, whether it be uh, different maneuver elements or artillery missions, stuff like that. I think this mission is important uh, just because it, it gets us ready for what may come in the future, right? So everything uh, uh, can, that can be seen in the, in the European, European theater right now as far as training for LISCO and everything else, it's just a good exercise to do as a division and therefore or leading into a core as a whole and just getting us all synced together so that we know what the future fight would look like. Uh, it's important just because it gets us ready for the, the future fight of what LISCO looks like. Uh, it, it's just something that helps us develop and train, synchronize as a core as a whole. Where we used to be so focused on the division and even the brigade aspect as a whole, it really syncs everybody together and makes sure that we're all uh, engaging in one team, one fight. Uh, that is uh, large scale operations, so it's where we were in the coin fight before, the counterinsurgency, this is what uh, the, the army's leading to as a whole, right? Different uh, multi-dimensional functions and stuff like that. So for me personally, this is the first time I've ever done a warfighter. Uh, so being able to experience this firsthand as, as my very first time going through this, it really shows me how every cell and every job syncs together as a whole, uh, being in the plan section. You know, some of the things I learned so far is that, that, that how crucial planning is. Uh, being, a, being a line soldier in my you know, previous part of my career, uh, it was always execute. It was just go out there, execute, go out there, execute. But this piece has actually shown me like how important planning is and the different, different work and the different echelons that all come together to make sure that there is a plan developed to be able to execute. One of the modernizations so far has been the mission command system, the AFATIDS that we work on. So what it essentially is is a computer that allows me to build different fire missions, build different uh, missions for CAS and AI and stuff like that, and be able to talk and distribute that same information to a different partner, such as like 3UK, 1st Cav, 3Core, those different elements like that.
this has just been a great overall learning experience so far. Uh, just being able to work in the 3-5 or the plan section as I referred to earlier, it's, it's just given me a lot to learn and a lot that I can carry forward me. Whenever I have uh, you know, soldiers under me again, I can really show them different echelons and, and different experiences of what the Army has to offer them and not just what you know, we're typically used to work, excuse me, learning on the line. Army strong! Hello, I am Colonel Micah Hutchins, and I am an Iron Soldier. I am the commander of the 1st Armored Division Sustainment Brigade, sustaining America's Tank Division. Uh, the Warfighter exercise is consisting of three different divisions, uh, to include 1st Armored Division, and our brigades, our enabler brigades, uh, the Aviation Brigade, the Artillery Brigade, and the Sustainment Brigade, as we exercise operations to maneuver our brigade combat teams across the battlefield. Now, this exercise allows the division to practice our systems and processes in order for us to be prepared to meet the requirements of a large scale combat operation. So many factors playing to our ability to project combat power if the nation so calls us to do so. This allows us the opportunity to train uh, those uh, tenants and those uh, factors uh, prior to having to do it in real life. Uh, this mission is important because it allows us the opportunity to understand the challenges that we will face on today's battlefield. Given the capabilities of our adversaries and the requirements for us to defend our country, our NATO partners and our allies, we must understand what those challenges are and how we can practice to overcome them and be successful on the battlefield. Uh, the opportunity for my soldiers to get hands-on experience sustaining a division, over 30,000 people on the battlefield, uh, it builds resiliency in their mindset of the stressors of the mission. Uh, it also builds confidence. It allows them to be able to think through the problem set 
And so it becomes second nature that they will be able to respond and respond well and to be able to do it over an extended amount of time. The, our command system architecture uh, to allow us to do mission command across, we'll say, thousands of miles. Uh, the systems that we are using allow us to see the battlefield and anticipate requirements, uh, as well as inform the Army on where gaps and seams occur and inform future modernization efforts to allow us to be successful. Uh, the importance of this exercise when it comes to mission readiness, uh, it, it instills confidence in the organization and it helps build a team. Uh, it helps bring them together and allow them to function efficiently and effectively uh, so that when we're called to act, uh, we're ready. Each and every one of my soldiers are very important. Uh, they are important to the brigade and more importantly, they're important to the mission of this division. Uh, each of my soldiers, I like to impress upon them how important they are. And every contribution that they make uh, to the division, it is something that the division needs. Uh, without them, uh, we couldn't do it. Over. Now, it's a privilege to serve in the 1st Armored Division. Uh, this is my second tour with the 1st Armored Division. It is a place that I love because I love the division. I love Fort Bliss. And most importantly, I love El Paso. Uh, the culture and the people here make it a great place to both live and work. Uh, so to call myself an iron soldier and stand on the shoulders of those that came before me is truly an honor. As the Division Simulations Officer, I've been planning this exercise since really last April, May. Um, from soup to nuts, really been involved in every part and piece of it, making sure every piece of the entire 180 enterprise, as well as a lot of people supporting from all across the entire Army and really DOD, are there to make sure we get after General Eisenhower's training objectives within an exercise that's actually run by the Corps and the Mission Command Training Program out of Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. So it's a lot of different parts and pieces. Really, it's figuring out the, the constructive and virtual wrap. You know, obviously, you guys are live under canvas, but what do you need portrayed in the fight so that you guys get the best training? So my job is important because, really, I mean, we all know how to, you know, walk through the woods and, you know, give hand and arm signals. But trying to figure out how to convert that to in scale digitally is very difficult. So. Here at Fort Bliss, we can run exercise for a brigade, and we, actually we've run exercise for the division where there's about 15 of us playing all of the core and all of the subordinate brigades. So if we're going to to take a small amount of people and appear to be larger and appear to be using the right systems, the right processes, and talking the right lingo, so the division thinks they're really running a division fight. Um, and it's really expanding on that across all the different warfighting functions, all the different training objectives, um, everything down to like, hey, the PAO team needs people to interview, so let's line those people up. Hey, you need enemy media to look at. You need friendly media to look at. You need all these different things just to get after your specific MOS, that across the entire division. And you can't put the 1st Armored Division in the field at once. It's a lot of money, a lot of people, a lot of resources. So we make it as close as possible so that General Eisenhower feels and the staff feels like the 1st Armored Division is out fighting the fight. But really that's done with a lot of digital systems and hundreds of people versus tens of thousands of people and a lot of fuel and a lot of vehicles. I'm really the puppet master behind the exercise. Uh, a little less so because the guys from Fort Leavenworth help with a lot of that because this is just so big. But I'm really 1AD's piece of making sure the exercise goes the way it's supposed to go. So if we find out, hey, the fires isn't working well, we go figure out, hey, is fires not working well because the division needs to get better at a specific task? Or is the, our digital replication or digital simulation not feeding the right information to the fires folks? And some of that's an understanding of all the different systems in the Army and all the different simulation systems that feed the actual warfighter and make the division feel like it's a real fight. So really the goal of warfighters or any, um, any major exercise like this is to make it as realistic as possible for the division. So really you can't do this any other way um, with obviously resource constraints, you know, not even the whole divisions around sometimes, different years, different times. Um, and it's really getting after, hey, let's make this harder than you've ever seen it. So that when you do see this in Europe, you do see this in Korea, wherever the division goes, real life, whatever real mission it is, we've given them repetition that's as realistic as possible at all the different warfighting functions, all the different tactical tasks, administrative tasks, and made it so, hey, next time we do this, it's not the first time we've done it. So like, this, is, this is pretty darn impressive. I mean, I was here for Warfighter 21-4, which the division did two years ago, and the stuff we're getting after here is everything we did there and more. So I mean, there, because of COVID, we really didn't, we didn't jump the CPs, we, we ran the command post off of, you know, wall power, things like that here. I mean, we're hidden away in a, uh, you know, school compound and top of doing our normal army mission. So it's, it's really 
two or three kind of levels above the last time I've seen the division do this. It's pretty impressive just to see everybody getting after what we used to do, what we can do, and really like the aspirational, what we're gonna do in the future. Because if, if you look at what we're playing with in this fight, it's not the first armored division of today, it's the first armored division of 2030. So there's things that we're digitally simulating that don't exist yet in real life, or just aren't feeling yet in the army. Um, so a lot of cool pieces of equipment, cool processes, cool systems, that we know the Army's gonna get eventually and we're allowing the division to train on it today. So when they see it for the first time, they've trained on it before and they're ready to go after whatever the Army needs. I guess the, the big ad is just, you know, when you look, you know, you look right now, we look around where we're at. I mean, there's tens, hundreds of people. The cool thing is there's thousands of people supporting this event in different ways. Um, there's five or six, well, there's really six Army installations involved in making sure one of these trained is the best it can be. There's about 1,300 people that are not training audience that are here making sure all the iron or torch soldiers here in this exercise are getting, getting the training they need. So it's really cool just to see how many people, how much money, how many resources come after this. Um, I mean, there's guys down in Florida for the Air Force. There's guys in Virginia making sure the sustainment pieces behind the scenes work. There's guys from Kansas, Texas, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh, we've got National Guard units from all over the country, reserve units from all over the country. And for some of them, they've been working on this for months and months and months. So it's really cool to see it all come together. Just, I mean, the thousands and, you know, millions and zillions of man hours and people and resources to come together. It's pretty cool. Okay, and you want me to put... No, just, I just want you to like... <laughs> Where? The two might be able to help her. Like she might. So. What it's going to take to reposition that way, and they should be able to give her that info. Okay, because for me, I, we know there's enemy there. Yeah, you can see. You can see like flowers. This exercise gathers really the entire core to test and evaluate the leaders and, and staffs at Echelon in terms of how they deal with. In this case, uh, uh, large-scale conflict, and so everybody from me at the battalion level all the way up to the core commanders being evaluated and tested. Um, but really, the training audience is the core and division, and we're helping to facilitate that by playing the brigades within 1AD. It's uh, all the way up to General Bernabe, uh, uh, the core commander, uh, down to my staff and my leaders within the battalion who are playing the response cell for 21AD. Um, and just helping, helping the training audience, which is the core of the division, uh, execute a war fight. So we're really testing for the Army what uh, the formation of the future looks like against a near-peer competitor. Um, and so we're going out and we're, we're employing the force uh, against a real-time enemy in simulation and then, and then figuring out our capabilities against something like that. We have response cells spanning really across Texas and, and up into Leavenworth and then a lot of people are traveling but uh, we've got folks both in the field uh, executing field ops as well as us here in the Sim Center uh, playing the role of, of, of folks out in the field but we're all connected by this computer system so that we can see and, and coordinate all of our actions as one force. The most valuable thing about an exercise like this is the fact that we're replicating a formation one echelon above what we normally execute. So beyond just practicing the staff military decision making process, planning, preparing and executing to, to, to take on a near peer enemy, uh, the real value comes in the fact that I've got not just the staff playing a brigade staff, and getting the perspective of that formation. But I've got staff sergeants, you know, in some instances playing company commanders. I've got lieutenants playing battalion commanders. I've got company commanders playing battalion commanders. Everybody gets to get in there and actually execute a fight and see what it looks like in larger scale operations beyond just their little bubble that they have on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. And they get, the, they get the training and perspective that they wouldn't get otherwise. And so for that reason alone, I think it's invaluable.
I'll tell you the mission training environment that we have here at Fort Bliss is absolutely phenomenal. The fact that we can integrate units that are in the field across different posts between here, here in Fort, uh, Fort uh, Cavallos and, uh, and, and here at the Mission Training Center is, is absolutely amazing, right? So we've got folks that are doing things in a field environment. I've got my folks here replicating 24-hour operations, and we're all connected by this system that, uh, that they've set up. So, you know, being able to talk to and have effects from pucksters that are in a whole different location is, is, is really great, right? And so one thing that I tell my staff all the time, and this is a great way to, to show them that, is uh, there's always the feeling of you know it's the squad that's messed up it's the platoon that's messed up you know if you're if you're joe at the bottom you know you think everybody's messed up but what i what i what i love here is uh you know the folks up at core the folks at division the folks at brigade as a battalion level staff they're just like us they're sitting here they're learning we're not the training audience we're helping to to fulfill a role to help prepare that training audience. And it's given them not just a perspective on war fighting, but it's also given a perspective on training to those, to those Joes. So, so I think they're, they're cursing their higher ups a little bit less now, and they're, and they're understanding what the issues are that everybody faces. And they're, they're really embracing their role as, as, as enabling the training audience to get after what they need to. In the computer as a puckster, it's really easy to hit a button to dig in a tank. It's a much different you know, equation when you're out in the field and you have to pull out an e-tool or, or get a C dozer over there to, to start digging something. And so um, getting those routines down here and building those habits to make sure that we do those things that keep us more survivable and more lethal on the battlefield, I think at some point I'd like to hope we go out to the field and, and they'll, they'll think, oh, what do I need to do now? Okay, I need to start digging so that I can be survivable because they've seen the results of that in the, in the computer. While this is a little bit... Uh, less consequential to them, where it's not actually uh, vehicles going down or personnel receiving casualties, um, at least the routine will help them. And I can tell you that the practice of doing things right every time pays off dividends in the end, and it comes down to that baseline discipline. So if you, if you get used to wearing kit in the field, it will be nothing as you're going out into war, right? And so just those little things and those little pieces of discipline and getting those things ingrained in folks' heads is, is uh, really helpful uh, as we go forward and, and, and execute operations. Good afternoon, my name is Captain David A. Aguilar. I'm part of the 1AD MIGPOD, standing for Main Command Post Operational Detachment. So within my job here within Division, I am integrated within the shop of G35. Now G35 focuses on future operations. So within this cell, I help plan for future operations and have been learning how to do it on the echelon of division. Okay, this uh, training is helping me uh, develop as a soldier uh, in many ways. It's helping me in the planning perspective uh, for where I was uh, in my previous unit as in battalion, I was with, within the S3 shop in operations. Now that is a battalion level. Now, if you can understand division level type of operations, which are a lot more intricate and complex, uh, it is much easier to basically uh, adapt to any type of environment uh, within the type of training that's provided here within uh, division. The big key takeaway within this is that you want to make sure that you're developed and trained so that you can bring your soldiers home safely at the same time reaching mission success. Collaboration between active duty with Texas Army National Guard has been great so far. Uh, the active duty has been uh, understanding that as a National Guardsman and a reservist, you don't quite do this every day. However, you are still qualified to conduct such operations by knowing such knowledge, by having such ranks, and being among the active duty. However, we do not do it every day as such as they do. But since they understand that we are quite, maybe not so in tune as as they are within operations, they're more than willing to help you out as long as you're willing to learn, as long as you're willing to adapt. They will coach you in any way that's necessary for you to get to the next level and adapt and develop and sharpen yourself to become the best leader you can be. The way the National Guard is assisting me to be all that I can be, uh, first and foremost, that uh, when it, within my civilian career, it also lets me apply for what I've learned within the military to apply within the civilian career for where those who know that I am a service member understand that I have learned leadership qualities within the U.S. Army 
and allow me to use what I've learned within the U.S. Army within my civilian career. At the same time, it's assisted me in becoming adaptable. How to do transition from civilian type uh, taskers to military uh, operations and, and really to ensure that I stand, uh, making sure I'm doing my part as a soldier, as a Texas Army National Guard soldier, to stay sharp in my knowledge. So whenever it's time to deploy, I'm adaptable and, and deployable in a rapid manner to, to meet my country's needs. Okay, so within my civilian career, I actually uh, work with behavioral health. Uh, I am a therapist for children with autism within my civilian career. Uh, strategies that you learn within the military and having temperance and understanding that processes take time for another to, to get improvement, but yet yeah, at the same time, if you improve as an individual and do your part, really pay attention to detail, those type of qualities assist me to doing what I do within my civilian job to understanding that there is a process to under, to helping such individuals and to trust the process and do my part to develop myself in order to help those individuals and continue to execute and continue to improve to reach an end state a preferred end state there you go Essentially, what? The seventh? Pretty much it. Um, did you, get, you guys, this is five o'clock for us, you can do it because we'll have everyone up. Potential counterattack, if you will. Over social media, where there's potential of a false flag. Uh, after about six hours, to locate what they believe to be the C2 node. Pass They just attack like this. Fire off, fire off, fire off, fire off. He's going to get even more treated. Hi, my name is Specialist Kim Joshua. I am a 35 Fox uh, All Source Intelligence Analyst. Uh, for this exercise, I am part of the G2 Co-op Section, but I'm assigned to Cisco, HHBN, Devardi, First Armored Division. So currently in the Intel Section, we facilitate a lot of enemy positions. So we find out where we. Um, so in the sim, right? Um, there's a lot of like enemy units are plotting in and our job is to find those enemy units right and facilitate either fires missions um isr missions which are intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance missions to help facilitate a better i would say like foothold for our maneuver units to move forward so basically in layman's term we help the brigades by finding out the things they need to shoot and here in this operation we're, we're just simulating a offensive operation against the enemy to learn how to better cooperate between the brigades and the division headquarters.
This training event has actually been pretty different than how the CPXs have gone. So previous training objectives, I'd say, for our section was to get a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more familiar with how, per se, like the fire section works, how the protection section works, how the AMD section works, because every section, even though they may not play together, they always play with us. So Intel is always a very big part of how um, any operation goes, stability, defensive, and um, uh, offensive operations, right? So, but in this kind of exercise, we have been playing a lot more of an active role, such as um, being in control of our assets, right? Um, usually we're sitting on a chat or looking at um, briefs and all that sort of stuff to get our information. But this is a little bit different because we're actually doing a lot more of the groundwork, a lot more of the practical work, um, taking in these different isolated units, isolated equipments, and doing our assessments off that, and working very close with the DCGO and the CG and trying to make um, sound and reasonable decisions in trying to make this operation go forward. Hi, my name is Captain Shana Taylor. I'm an intelligence officer and I'm the commander of SIS Company, Systems, Intelligence and Sustainment. So the division headquarters uh, from PFC all the way up to the CG is out here participating. It's approximately 300 soldiers uh, divided across all three command post nodes to include the RCP, the DTAC and the D-Main, which is where I'm currently located. So uh, the Warfighter is a simulated exercise where the division practices executing command and control over a battle space. Um, simulates that if we were to deploy and we were to actually fight a war in another country, would the division headquarters be able to successfully uh, maneuver our elements to victory? Well, it's super important because of the dynamic uh, world that we live in right now. I mean, we could be deployed to Europe to help support Ukraine. We could deploy to Africa, we could deploy to, um, you know, anywhere in the Asia-Pacific Asia region. Um, but regardless, the division headquarters is always ready to fight and win. So this is sort of, sort of the culminating exercise of a train-up that we've been conducting since last August when we deployed to the National Training Center at Fort Irwin, California. Uh, since then, we've done three other exercises in preparation, um, and this is sort of our capstone event. So everyone joins the Army to do their jobs. And here at the division headquarters, we are a uh, company of staff officers with specific professional uh, skills, right? We have, signet we have signet officers, we have signaliers, we have logisticians, uh, and then of course we have tankers, infantrymen, and, uh, and a special group of folks that provide effects. And so here in the warfighter, they get to do their profession, much like if we were out in the field, we'd be doing our profession there as well. The simulation that we're operating on is, is the newest form. It's called CPCE. Uh, it's what the Army will use in the future to fight um, when we are not co-located with our enemy or with our elements. So this en enables us to be able to execute command and control from a far off distance if we can't uh, deploy quickly to wherever we need to be in the world. My job here as the D-Main Commander is to sustain this command post, and that includes feeding, transporting, fueling, and uh, providing logistical support so that the division headquarters can focus on their specific jobs. They don't have to worry about where they're going to sleep, where they're going to eat, and how they're going to move. Um, as long as I do my job, the division headquarters can fight and win. One of the greatest challenges and rewards as a SIS company commander is that I get to interact, teach, coach, mentor, and lead anyone from the lowest rank in the Army as a private, PFC, all the way up to a Lieutenant Colonel and Sergeant Major. Each one of my soldiers requires a different version of interaction, uh, motivation, teaching, and coaching. And a lot of the times, I get to learn from them as much as I get to provide leadership to them. Um, and in that capacity, the dynamics of this organization um, will help me be a better leader in the end, but also allow me to interact with every level of the Army. This is Renegade 6. I am an Iron Soldier.
Yes, sir. Joseph. My name is Danny Hughes, and uh, I'm a chaplain in the Arizona Army National Guard. We're here uh, training uh, here at Fort Bliss uh, for this exercise, getting some great training uh, for, for our unit. Our unit is here from the Arizona Army National Guard at this exercise, uh, Im embedded with uh, the 1 AD, the, the 1st Armored Division, uh, here uh, in order to learn about large-scale uh, combat operations and to grow in our abilities in our, in, our, in our operations and planning processes to execute those kinds of operations. We're training to fight and win America's wars, and that's important because when we fight and win America's wars, we maintain freedom and the American way of life. And that's really what we're, we're trying to accomplish uh, when we're out here doing this training, conducting these exercises, so that we are prepared. We don't want, none of us want to go to war, but in the event that we have to, we want to be prepared the very best way that we can. As a soldier, there's a number of reasons why this mission, this training is important. Again, it's because we, we, try, to, um, we try to learn all the different skills in the operations and planning process and, and make those things happen across the course of a battlefield. Uh, in this environment, in this, this virtual environment. The chaplains are here to help religious, uh, re to, to bring religious support and so that the spiritual fitness of our troops can be encouraged and maintained as well. To try to predict all of the variables as best as you can and be as ready as you can when you go into that battle, then you have less surprises. And I think that's what training like this is about, for us to flex our, our muscles in this process of, of uh, operations and planning and execution of a mission and to be able to know that we have tried to think up as many uh, things that the enemy might do to us as possible and to be able to respond to those so that we are the most equipped force that we can be. This mission makes us more able you know, to respond at a moment's notice. Whenever the country calls, whenever we are, we are called upon to go into war, this mission, this training, makes us ready. I'm confident that every troop that's here training will be able at some point in the future when they might find themselves in a combat operation to be able to look back to the things that have happened in this training and recognize the value that it brought to them in that current moment and how it, it, it helped them, it empowered them, and it equipped them to be able to conduct the mission in that real-time environment. One of the new systems that's a bit newer to the Army is called CPCE, and it's, the, it's a complex uh, battlefield management system where all these different layers uh, from all of the different sections can be put on top of one another, and you can get a, a, a great picture, a great visualization of the complexities of the battlefield. And so through using uh, CPCE, we have been, you, can, you can use it to see where all kinds of different things are going on. Uh, enemy actions as well as friendly actions, where all of our units are, where we need support, where things are going very well, and where things might be going uh, not, not as well, right, not as good, where we need to send support. And so that's a great platform to help us train and be ready uh, for the fight. Being in a field environment is, uh, is always impactful for mission readiness because, you know, the Army kind of, uh, one of the sayings that's in the Army is we train how we fight. Right? And so when we, we come to a field environment where the wind is out here, the sun's out, it's hot, we're wearing all of this gear, um, the, the dust is blowing, and we're, we're eating food in the field, we're sleeping in the field, all those kinds of things, it trains us and helps uh, develop that muscle memory 
so that someday when we end up in the field, in, in, the, in the real fight, uh, we've done this before. It becomes easy. It becomes something that we just do. It's, it's, not a, it's not a big shock to our system because we train as we fight. As an Arizona National Guardsman uh, coming here with the 158th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade, we have felt incredibly welcomed by the first AD team here at Fort Bliss, all the way from General Eisenhower down through all the ranks to all of the, all of the troops and personnel that are a part of the operation here. We've been greatly welcomed and we appreciate that because the National Guard has a lot to bring to the fight and uh, we have a lot of expertise to bring. And so we, uh, we appreciate the big welcome, the, the big Texas welcome, right, that you guys have given us here and, uh, and we are proud to be a part of this team.